two years ago we saw that something was happening behind our house. So I went down and then I met Olivia and she said she uh, had bought this area and that there would come a big building and she said we could come around whenever we wanted. The restaurant is open and has a kind of nice evening going tonight with some special food. And there's a short film the architects are showing and I told some people to come along. It should be just a relaxed, people can come. First of all, Olivia was a very, like a perfect uh, client. She knew what should happen there. It should be multi-use, multi-purpose. So she just wanted to have something that's very stable, very robust. And do whatever you like. Perfect start, no? I had sold what I had in London in order to buy this piece of land. So that was a big thing, it was all I had in the world and it was uh, a very risky thing to do, lots of people told me so. It took two years and a half to get the money. We approached different banks, I think one of the, the bank guy asked, uh, and what are your husband doing and all this shit. So, so who are the businessmen behind yeah. you? It's just a two-woman show we are running here. It was a kind of unconventional approach for these bank guys. The two women come in with a, for them, probably crazy idea of a building. And a dog. And a dog. This kind of risk assessment really shapes the cities. Yeah, that These guys who have no idea of architecture, no idea of how a community or a, a city can grow, how much power they have. It's not just building a house and filling it with people in who pay the rent. It has really to do to create an environment which is also bigger than the parts it consists of. We are interested in people who do art, ecological, creative women or dogs. I think we had also a criteria of dogs or, or uh, animal friendly. The city should be much more heterogeneous. Normally you have a tendency that you have either housing projects or office projects or cultural projects. Or, so it's always like a very homogeneous, let's say, use of buildings. How could you inscribe this heterogeneity into a typology. If you have a 26 meter deep unit, it won't be housing. It will for sure be something more related to culture or production. If it's getting smaller and smaller, it will have a tendency which is more housing. So just by the typology, you produce a heterogeneity in use. It's got a longevity, this building. It can be used in 100 years completely differently. I mean, you know, who knows? A school could move in here. Uh, and that is incredibly important in architecture because if you restrict usage, well, usage changes. So we have all these steps and we have two elevators, right, left, right, left. So we have four units per floor. Every unit is just going from one side to the other. One of the biggest challenges was uh, this, uh, yeah, let's say, the simplicity we wanted to achieve. It's very generous. All the sizes and the, the feeling in it, we also have the office there, it feels super generous. And this is unfortunately not often achieved. This excess of space, these terraces, uh, the, the big openings, it's not about design and looks. It's just about space. How we as architects are able to make an argument which is not just about the architecture or the object of the architecture, but to wider questions. The special function of these buildings is also then expressing aesthetics, but aesthetics in itself is for me a discussion that I don't like in the context of architecture. It's secondary. When something is true and right, it will always be beautiful. But still, this massive building, especially when you come from the street up to the building and you see this, this facade from this side, wow, this is really, really, really something. The behavior of an architecture is completely different towards the public if it's not cutting down, let's say, on one line from public to private.
What we mostly find in Berlin is the Berlin block, which means the street is public and the pedestrian ways. Then there is a gate and inside is private. I really don't want to support this, this division that only the infrastructure of street and pedestrian way is public and everything else is just in the private hand and the private, under private control. There shouldn't be any private project that is not, on the other hand, dealing with the public. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense in a kind of the big community of a city. These barriers also between public and private are very complicated in a building such as this because everything is an experiment. It's all new. This type of building is breaking barriers on many levels. For example, the outside spaces have a lot of different usage. There is, um, of course, the people who have their creative businesses here, but the terraces are all shared. And then there's events, when the garden downstairs is shared and then we have a big input from neighbours and when the neighbourhood garden with the boxes is built then we also have to coordinate, you know, these people are also here using the garden and how does that work? Yeah, they're growing uh, tomatoes and beans and things like that. Flowers. You love the flowers? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's a great, it's a little kind of paradise here for us, being in town, that's very nice. And there's my dog! Come on, Okre! Yeah, and the architects were very patient with the dog coming to the meeting. There was a model of the building which was shown to me with that wall being straight. And then there was a second model with this kink in it. And the architect suggested which one was more appealing to me. I think he knew that I would straight away say the kink, you know, who wants straight edges? That is basically what I liked a lot. That's why I choose also this space, because these angles, they're basically from the grid, from the outline of the property. My flat is exactly this. It goes all to the front here and goes till here. This concept of the outside of the building to me is it's something that cities don't think enough about. Their visitors can move around the building, the neighbours can move around the building. This is putting our principle of, of, of freedom into the situation. I think it's the possibility to create the next society, to open communities, to open houses. It has to change the paradigm, and that's why we all have to change how we are with each other. I would say social fabric. Being in general is always being together for me. I mean, that's the way I see things. It's very interesting. It's the first time that I'm actually using a building, that I'm part of a building that I also identify with in the function of the building, of the functioning of the building. Things are really changing. You cannot say separate life from work. This is something that's different from what was the generations before. We have in our office perfect kitchens because this is part of life. They are coming here to work because they don't want to be closed in, in a space. They, they want to feel connected. Uh, yeah, that's basically for me as an artist, it's the more interesting to kind of be also in a communicative situation. This is just really an experimental place to have this openness um, in a city, in an urban landscape and uh, have this possibility to kind of be involved also kind of shaping it. So. I can say more, uh, at the moment it's pretty new, you know, I mean, we're here now since a little bit more than half a year. From the beginning there was a very strong feeling of otherness, all those people were other people, and you really like, okay, what is, he, what is he putting up there? Oh, this is really ugly. Oh, I'm going to put my plants here because I really want to make a markation that like, okay, this is like my area. And it's a very interesting process how social cohesion starts growing. It's not implemented. You have this whole circulation where everybody is meeting each other like completely naturally. If you rent a unit somewhere and you just go there and you don't care about uh, the neighbors so much, uh, which I personally like somehow, this anonymity. But in this case, you're somehow forced to get to know your neighbours. They can bring their children, their children can play in the garden. There is an ability for people to bring their dogs and the dogs run freely here. 
these people just get up from their desks and go out and have a look at the chickens. And it frees the mind a bit. The, your, your, your breaks become part of your life. It's allowing people to be more human, I think, this, this building. And that's why I think it's been very well designed. It was important to us that people didn't have to worry about the floor or worry about they could be free in their in their spaces to make a mess we don't feel that the building is finished being built i mean for me the, the building anyway was always going to be covered in green so in 10 years you would see no concrete we want everything to climb on this house i don't need the plants forget about the plants we have the plants here on the balcony that's great <laughs> and in the garden soon Time. Plants need time. A lot of good things in life need time. Cooking needs time. Now lunch is ready, everybody. <laughs>